Hey, it is Tuesday morning TMT, Tuesday morning transformation, and today is not just a transformation. Today is an awakening. It's an awakening. So, here's the title. Here's what we're going to talk about today. We know how this story ends. We know how this ends already. And so, it seems like we're living in a crazy world, man. Every Hey, Kelly, everything is unpredictable. It seems like there's total chaos. There's no doubt that there's unexpected things that are changing and things are happening every day, literally changing minute to minute. And uh, what do we really expect next? But there's things that are happening that are on a much bigger scale than we realize. That it's actually above humanity that's happening and we're coming in to a massive awakening. So I saw a tweet the other day and this guy said, Demons scream louder right before they're exercised, right? Right before they're exercised. So it's like, you know, you see in movies that someone's about to get shot and they're begging for their life. That's what's happening in the world. The demons are screaming louder because they're about to be exercised. So in the last few weeks, let's look at what's been happening and, and the intention of what's been happening. Things just aren't happening. Things aren't falling apart. Things are coming together. So in the last few weeks, couple weeks, President Trump made some major crucial, crucial life and world changing decisions that are actually bringing, allowing the demons to scream. So let's look at these decisions. Number one, he took away mandatory vaccination. We have a choice to vaccinate. Well, that goes against the whole CDC, the World Health Organization, the whole Gates Foundation, who is tied in with Big Pharma, who's tied in with the Rothschild family and the Rockefeller family and the financial families that actually own global banking. That was a decision that affected billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to, to mandate vaccinating humanity. Let's look at the other one. He took away Bill 666, which was the ability for to for the military or the National Guard to come in, test you on COVID, and if you're if you are coronavirus positive, pull you out of out of the house, separate your family, and actually send you to a government secure location. Hey Dakota, you're gonna love this one. And what's the other one? Uh, he squashed the Gates ID 2020. What's that mean? That means making COVID vaccination mandatory. Squash that. That is billions and billions and billions of dollars right into the Gates Foundation and the connection with the World Health Organization and the financial families. Then he defunded the World Health Organization. Massive move. Then he removed censorship on social media so people can't hide. And now all this stuff is coming out, right? Then he mandated opening churches. Well, that goes against everything because now people can can tap into that inner power that gives them strength, that gives them a, that helps them reinforce their spiritual identity that says, we're not going to take this bullshit, that God is bigger than anything you can do, Gates Foundation, CDC, Fauci, uh, you know, whoever this is, right, whoever's doing this, then he opens businesses. So now it's like the malls open, then what happens? Man, the demons start screaming, right? The demons start screaming. So is it any surprise that we have an act of racism? Now, was there a racist act, hey, Sean, that, was, that actually happened? Well, it was a white police officer and a black man. But let's look at what's really happening because what they're trying to do is they're trying to create separation. So now, hey, guess what? People don't care as much about social distancing. People don't care as much about wearing a mask. I live at the beach. There is no masks. Okay, people are having protests. No masks. They're losing their grip. So we got to find another strategy. Racism works all the time. That's like saying, you know, I hit myself in the head with a hammer and now I have a headache. Well, the general public is looking at the headache, but they're not looking at why did I get hit with a hammer? So I have a friend that is a retired commander of a police department in Seattle which you're right under the police chief, and he has connections. He has big connections. He's the guy, like when you have all these riots, they call him and say, put your team together, and we need to stop these riots. So that's who my, he's one of my best friends. That's who my friend is in Seattle. Okay, so he just calls me up randomly because God is doing this. He's not on social media. So all this information comes to me because people know I have a big mouth, and I'm going I'm to talk about it, right? So where am I going to talk about it? Right here right here so here we go and we are getting spirituality on this so 
So who was George Floyd? Well, I mean, he's a human being, first of all, and human beings need and to protect their rights. He did have felony, from my understanding, and this is what I was told, he had felony warrants against him, against him. So it takes a human being that made some mistakes in their life, and what's it do? It makes him a target. He's an easy target. And then you got this Derek Chauvin, or however you pronounce his name, and uh, Chauvin, and uh, who's he? He's a cop with 18 previous complaints of, of overusing uh, police brutality. So now you have a hired thug and you have a victim. You have the perfect victim and the perfect persecutor. Who is funding this? So he was using a technique that you're not supposed to use to submit someone and certainly there was no resistance. Now we have a white guy and a black guy. Does it look like racism? Yeah, it was planned. This thing was planned and if you don't believe that it was planned. Hey Beth, hey Jason, how you doing brother? If you don't believe it was planned, then it's because you're, you're looking at the symptom and you're not looking at the cause. Okay, so this is a perfect setup. Then on my social media, I have a bunch of people that do their homework, apparently on my timeline. So this woman shows the contract that these provocateurs, these people that are hired to start uh, riots. And there's a four page contract. And it says exactly what you're supposed to do. It says, don't harm people, but you can loot businesses. And then my friend tells me it came down from the police chief in Seattle. The police chief, they, they tell the, the cops, don't stop looting, but stop people from hurting other people. So don't arrest people for looting, but arrest them for hurting other people. And it says, you know, and this is what it says in the contract. It's you're not allowed to carry weapons. You can loot. Basically, it's free. And then here in L.A., we have buses, buses of white people coming in and being dropped off at malls. This is not racism. There's white people coming in being dropped off. Here's my question. Who's paying for the buses? How did there get to be buses, public buses, picking up people to riot? There's a bigger thing. This isn't about racism. The demons are screaming. Now, isn't it interesting that businesses open, now businesses are being destroyed. How does, how does that happen? Is there a bigger picture here? So now, and the cops are told to stand down. Why is that? So I tell my friend, who gives these orders? Police chief. Who gives the police chief orders? Mayors. Who gives the mayor's orders? And he's going through this with me. Uh, governors. Who's giving the governor's order? and then orders and then all of a sudden there's silence on the phone okay this is a the demons are screaming the demon there are seven major decisions that happen that shut down the destruction of humanity and the unity of humanity is coming back because people are getting tired of this why because we're spiritual beings right people are waking up they know okay there's something going on this isn't this isn't just happening, but let's stop looking at the headache and let's start looking at the hammer. We need to take out the hammer. We don't need to pay attention to the headache. Yes, I'm not minimizing. I'm not minimizing. Is there racism that exists? I'm not talking about racism. I'm talking about that is the symptom of something that's going on that's much bigger when we are coming into a revelation. Okay, David Hawkins was a quantum physicist and he, he did a kinesiology and he, he created a thing called the map of consciousness that's an energy level. When you get to revelation, when you're functioning at unconditional love, the product of the state of being of unconditional love is revelation. What's that mean? You come into a higher consciousness, that things are revealed to you in a higher consciousness. And now that we're in this state, we are in revelation. Now, I can't comment on the book of Revelations. I haven't read that in detail, but I know we're coming into awareness because we know how the story ends. The demons are screaming, God, when there's not win or lose, there's always a rise in consciousness. And that's what's happening, that the demons, metaphorical demons, now have, have they've been hiding in silence. They've been doing all these things. And now it's all being revealed. The, the veil is being parted. And all, the reason I'm on here is to say that let's understand who we are. 
that the universal law of God, of human unity, humanity is unity. And we come together that, that we eliminate racism. We know who we are. We pray. There is science that showed that when large groups of people get together and pray at once, they have reduced the crime in a city. They reduce the crime in the city. And all these prayers that people are doing, how do we take action? We pray. So now that we understand who we are, and now that we see, we know how the story ends. The story has an ending that is in favor of humanity and God in peace and in love and is coming to a higher awareness. And I see on Facebook when people say, you know, I can't, who's having trouble sleeping at night? I don't have trouble sleeping at night. It's not because there isn't pain in the world. It's not because I don't have compassion. It's not because that I don't have empathy. It's because we know how the story ends. And so we have to go through the process. We see it from a higher consciousness. We understand that there's people in lower consciousness, that there are people out there that will take a paycheck. And in this contract, it even shows how they will get paid. And that, that we, we have a consciousness that's higher, that we can observe the community, but we can take action in a loving way. We don't condone it, but we don't attack it. There's a big difference. Martin Luther King, and Dakota, you put that up. Um, you know, they, uh, he won and won the Nobel Peace Prize. You know, you look at Gandhi, you look at... Um, uh, she was the president of South Africa. I just blanked on his name. You guys know, hey, print his name in there. And to Martin Luther King, they, they change the world with peace and love. That's the revelation. So we can breathe that in. So what do we do? We establish our identity in our divinity. We take our inner power. We give love. We pray for love. We pray for those people that are riding that they don't know that God is within them. We pray for them. We have forgiveness. We get to a higher consciousness so there can be a revelation that goes across the world that brings unity. Hey, all you guys. Hey, I appreciate you, Camilla, Carolyn, and Jennifer. All you guys, I appreciate you being here because this is a message we need to share around the world. So let's breathe in our divinity. Let's pray. Let's release the pain because God wins. God wins. God always prevails. You can't go against universal laws. It is impossible. Evil cannot survive in the light. Dark, when you shine the light into darkness, darkness cannot exist. So we need to be the light. And what's the action that we take? Hey, you know what? When you're on social media and you get a petition, sign it. If you, I'm not telling you what to believe or who to follow. Well, I am telling you what to believe. Believe that you are divinity. Believe that we do have power. We are not powerless in this world. That one individual can change the world. And when we come together, that probability is bigger than any evil. There can't be any darkness that exists when we shine light. And that light comes from us because you are more powerful than you think. Stop thinking, tap into your power, let's take action, let's sign those petitions, let's bring the message of love, let's bring the message of unity, let's radiate it and illuminate it from inside of us because when we have that revelation and we function on unconditional love, that we can change the consciousness of the planet and we come together and this too shall pass. So guess what? <laughs> Guess what, gang? Hey, there's an election in November. The demons are going to scream. They're going to get louder and louder and louder, and they will die. They will die, and they're going to scream. But let's not be attached to the screaming. Let's be attached to the end of the story. Let's see the outcome in the end, and let's breathe that in, and let's create it now. Hey, share this all over the world. Please share this on your timelines. If you believe this is truth for you, then let's become leaders, right? Let's become leaders and let's take action in our consciousness, signing petitions, spreading love, illuminating, and let's make a difference in the world today. Love you guys. Thanks.